I've been a tabletop gamer for a while, but nowhere near as long as some folks. The other day, I was updating a piece about the satanic panic of the 1980s. I started wondering what my fellow players' stories were like. The roots of the panic went deep, and even the most unexpected people can carry baggage from it. So, what are some of your stories? Oh, yeah. This is going to be good. Or bad, depending on your point of view. I was 12 when I first heard about Dungeons and Dragons. I saved up my money and got the little starter kit. My friend and I were working up characters, and we had a blast doing it. When a new story comes out about two kids playing D&D under a bridge and deciding to make a murder-suicide pact, apparently heavy metal music was also involved. I swear I'm not making this up. My parents saw the news story and, knowing nothing about D&D, somehow concluded that D&D was at fault for their pact. Fast forward to my family meeting, and I'm being told that they wouldn't make me give up D&D, but they think I should strongly consider it? I gave up on D&D and earned their praise and $20 from my dad, the cost of the materials I lost. It was a hollow feeling and to this day I regret not standing up to them. It was buried in my childhood and left behind until, quite recently, I happened to cross D&D again and remembered how much I enjoyed it. I've taken it back up in spite of my age, 47, and it is everything I thought it would be when I was first starting out. I've since gotten into painting miniatures, and I hope to learn enough to DM well in time. And horror of horrors, I listen to heavy metal music. Please pray for me. Not much of a horror story, but I gamed throughout the satanic panic. I started playing D&D at age 14 in 1979. My dad, who would often overreact, sat down and talked to me about it and deemed it harmless fun. But I had a buddy who was dating a girl from a very religious family. They refused to let her date him until their cop friend watched us play. So I ended up running a game of champions in 1983 for my group while a deputy sheriff watched. We were all about to turn 17 or 18 and were surly about it, but you back your friends. The surprising thing was that the deputy was a woman in law enforcement in a rural town in the south. She just sat politely through the whole game and just asked a few questions regarding rules and to understand who some of the NPCs were. When it was over, she looked at us and said it was obviously harmless, but she did point out that our first choice for solving a problem was violence. And yeah, we conceded the point. The girl ended up dumping my buddy in an ugly breakup. He was still heartbroken in the way only a teenager can be. We're all still pals almost 40 years later. Not exactly a D&D story, but once upon a time, my hardline Christian dad found a CD pack of Might and Magic that I had borrowed from one of my geeky buddies. A complete meltdown followed. I had to launch the game to demonstrate what kind of magic was taking place, and after a checkup of some fireballs and healing spells, I had to listen to a lecture about real life magic and its supposed consequences. A note to fundamentalist parents. You're not making your children righteous. You're just making them really good at stealth, lying, and feigning obedience. Making great rogues by the sound of it. I have a tale from as late as 2012, and the reason I went for a really good while without tabletop games. I was in high school and had been playing for a good while up until this point. My friends enjoyed it, and we had a good, decent DM for a while. Now, I'm not a person who cares much for religion. Naturally as such, I didn't even bother to ask anyone what their religions were. As it turns out, one of my players was slowly moving away from the religious practices of a rather uniquely conservative family of evangelical Christians. To put things short, I managed to out his quote-unquote unholy practices to his parents, not knowing the ramifications this would bring. I have since been banned from speaking to him and have not seen him in public since. My screw-up had also caused the group to eventually fall apart. I have not seen nor spoken to that player since then. I had loved RPGs for most of my childhood and teens, but only played video games due to lack of proper geeky friends. 
When I got to college, I ran to a guy in my sociology class who offered to put together a new campaign. And he invited me. I was still living in my parents' place and commuting to school, and the guy hosting the game was literally a two minute drive from their place. Same subdivision, no worries. It was an alright game, basically everything you expect with an experienced group of players bringing in a newbie. I played a ranger, had some laughs, and was looking forward to the next session. I get home and my mom asks me what I was doing with my new school friends. I told her we were just playing a game. I expected a, oh, that's nice, and nothing else. But then she specifically added, as long as it wasn't that Dungeons and Dragons. Now, I didn't exactly have a close relationship with my parents at that point, but I was also 19 and I'd been busting my hump at school for nearly a year while working as well. So I say, with all the casualness I can manage, that that was exactly what we were playing. My mother gets this concerned look on her face, and then she sits me down to have this serious conversation talking to me the same way you talk to a small child, explaining in detail that I need to remember it was all made up. For context, I'd been a published writer for a few years up until that point, and I'd been consuming fiction in all genres voraciously, almost since I could walk. I was an honor roll student with a nearly full ride scholarship, and I had no history of not being able to tell reality from make-believe. My family wasn't a particularly religious household either, and both my parents are college educated. Guess the roots of the panic were real deep. I can remember the attitude in the 80s towards tabletop gaming. When I first got into D&D, my parents told me flat out that they had heard these games had taken over some people's lives, and if they saw the same thing happen to me, they were taking it away. I was lucky that they were open-minded enough to see that it wasn't inherently evil, and saw I was meeting good people through my gaming groups. I also remember feeling like I had to keep the whole thing a secret through high school and college because of people's reactions. I did have one person I knew tell me that they used to play D&D and enjoyed it, but gave up on it because it was satanic. It was kind of frightening because you never knew who, if they found out you played, would react well, would make fun of you if you're a geek, or think you were evil incarnate. The attitude today is so much better. The game itself has become much more in the mainstream and has affected so much of pop culture. I was floored when I found out that the husband of the priest at my mom's church freelances with Paizo. I'm a child of the 80s. My parents became born again in their mid-20s with the help of a Pentecostal, speaking in tongues denomination, aunt. It was like the height of the satanic panic. My dad burned all of his records. I, at age 5 or 6, donated all of my satanic toys to the thrift store, specifically He-Man and Star Wars, both emphasize using a power not from God. I wasn't allowed to watch Thundercats or a lot of other things. A lot of this stemmed from a book called Turmoil in the Toy Box. We stopped watching any fantasy. My parents sort of apologized, and my mom bought me a bunch of He-Man toys at an antique store around when I was 18. My dad became a pastor, and he has always been pretty open to sci-fi and pop culture, but still is uncomfortable with fantasy stuff. He definitely believes in spiritual warfare and the end times. When I started playing D&D when I turned like 34, my mom asked if I was sure I wanted to invite it into my life. I said I was willing to risk it. As a kid though, I believe all of this, and it was really frightening. It basically gave credence to nightmares and caused me to have quite a bit more of them. I still make a lot of jokes about it in-game. This is how I play any zealous paladin or cleric. Not as an unrelenting crusader, but as a person who believed every irrational and convenient lie they were told. It also makes for easy growth arc that doesn't interfere with any main storyline. Everyone stayed away from her house. My buddy loved to play D&D on the down low with us, but his mother not only insisted her son would never play a game like that, she proudly declared she would burn any book she found. It was real hard to explain why he kept needing to hang out with us after school, and our reasons got increasingly bizarre. Finally, she got suspicious and walked in on all of us playing at my house. We didn't lock our doors back then, you see. She lost it, gathered up my books, and threw them into my backyard. Then she spins around and starts demanding to know where our matches were. My dad finally comes out to see what the hell is going on. 
my friend's mother announces that she has caught us playing that demon game and she was going to burn all the books. Bad move. My father got me into D&D with a little computer game called Pool of Radiance in 1986. He immediately goes full drill sergeant mode on her, demands she march her ass off his property before he calls the cops, and tells her we're learning to smite evil, not hide from it. That last part was a fib, but that's how my dad rolls. She was dumbfounded. Absolute silence resigned while she just retreated from her house. Months later, she still insisted she would burn any books if she found them in her house, but she never stopped her son from coming over and playing with us. Man, the Satanic Panic is a real-life horror story that we have not yet covered on this channel to an extensive degree. It's been brought up a couple of times, but we haven't covered stories from the period. It is quite wild to reminisce on that kind of thing. I'm lucky enough to have family members who aren't into this kind of thinking. They're very open to fantasy and Dungeons and Dragons. Hell, my dad got me into Lord of the Rings and my grandpa is very encouraging to my playing of Dungeons and Dragons. So thank God for that. But for some people, that is not the case. And hence we get stories like this. Though I do like how a lot of these had a happy ending. If you want a great video that covers the Satanic Panic, its origins, and the way it affected D&D, &D, and whether or not it's legitimate, I mean, I know you know the question of that, but it's still addressed in the video. There is an amazing documentary, mini documentary, by the New York Times. It's on YouTube for free. I'll link it in the cards. It's a great video. Totally recommend it. If you guys enjoyed this episode of RPG Horror Stories and you want to let me know, then please do leave a like. If you want to see more of my content, then please do subscribe to Crispy's Tavern. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories or thoughts, go down to the comments down below. If you can't think of a comment, leave the comment, Satan is here, to represent that you made it to the end of the video. And that's like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all next time. Farewell.